Hello, Philip. Hi. <laughs> and welcome to the Circle One Gallery. Um, I did my research recently for you, and I discovered that you were born in Thessaloniki, in Greece. Is this right? Exactly. Okay. And you also that you graduated from the uh, School of Visual and Applied Arts uh, in Aristotle University, Thessaloniki. Also right. Yeah, mastering painting. Yeah. Perfect. And uh, I, I also found out that your artistic activity has taking place mainly in Thessaloniki, mm -hmm. but uh, in the past few years you live in Berlin, where you continue to create. That's right. Perfect. And um, one last thing, <laughs> I found out that you have received the, the received scholarships and uh, that you have participated in uh, exhibitions in Greece and Germany. I like that too. <laughs> okay, so after that uh, for formal introduction, um, I would like to start our conversation by asking what made you get involved in art? Yeah, things started in a way which is not like really considered art. I started painting graffiti when I was 15, uh, trying to mimic the older kids, trying to appear cool, but that's what drove me into playing with colors and stuff. Mm -hmm. And I think that the biggest impact graffiti had on me was that it altered the way I'm observing the city around me. Mm -hmm. Because it gives you the, the, the right to think that you can intervene in the space. So you create a completely new narrative about what walls, empty spaces or blank spots in the, in the, in the city, inner or outer, can be how, how this place can be used by you. Mm -hmm. This is already a form of, particip of participation and uh, a form of creation. So then I felt the need to apply for the arts instead of going for a, for another type of education, and the rest is history from then on. Yes. Okay. Okay. Really interesting. What you said. And also, I would like to to ask you uh, about uh, your work that uh, includes uh, in situ installations and paintings. And uh, do these two elements coexist, or is there a dividing line between them for you? Yeah. Nice question. In reality, I believe that we cannot be artists without trying and feeling fine in different means. I don't think that the means we use to express ourselves should be the label we carry on, mm -hmm. we carry on with, and uh, feel the afraid to get the dust from. Mm -hmm. So from my way, I, I had the need to move from painting walls to painting on, 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 on canvases, and uh, I had to find my palette and use different types of compositions. Mm -hmm. But the more I used to paint, the more I realized that what I'm trying to do exactly is create the sense of space, mm -hmm. the sense of, of the arrangement of space inside the canvas. Mm -hmm. My background also has a huge involvement with practical and technical uh, things, because in my family there has been a lot of uh, there have been a lot of hand workers. Mm -hmm. So I always needed and wanted to do something hands on instead of brass brushes and and, uh, and colors and more abstract you want something to be uh, uh, utilized exactly see the space being able to touch it and, and move around it so the more i was getting to become confident about, about my paintings the more confident i also felt to step out of it mm -hmm. and play with space and trying to find what can i do with all this background i have Mm -hmm. um, your personal history yeah exactly there is some kind of line which distinguishes both means and this is very obvious in the art history also but I dare to not think like that when I want to be creative so if I want to paint this day I will paint something but I also like the, the the utilization of the body when you try to explore and do things with your hands and other materials mm -hmm. I, I see I see I understand what you say uh, so now we're going to um, see some of your work. Mm -hmm. And uh, I would like to ask you, how do you uh, define the space for an installation? Uh, which is the ideal location for your work? How do you choose where to rotate mm -hmm. what you're creating? I, 
from my from my painting back, background, I I observed that I was doing a kind of research on what the city has to offer that attracts my my, my attention. It was mainly empty spaces and um, areas which were not carrying a huge uh, narrative, which was very hard to break it, if you would like, to redo what what has been already done there by architects or anyone around. Um, In order to do that thing, I had to look for abandoned places, for areas where profitable exploitation could not be done anymore because that meant that there would not be a lot of traffic and not, not only cars, but also people and stuff. And that there would be a lot of leftovers from previous activities, which would give a non-space sense to that type of space. Um, by working like this on paintings, I was going physically to those places to take photos and to get inspiration. And the more I used to be there, the more I got, the more I got closer to those places. Um, abandoned factories, huge dumps where people throw their, their trash illegally, and, and places like this. Also, these spaces for me have a very strong connection to the graffiti background because when you're looking for empty places to just spend your Sunday painting and not having anyone bother you, that's a place which you would choose anyway. And um, furthermore, when I started doing, going for the installation things on the on the, on the on public space, I realized that there there are the narratives that I have observed that are being carried by these areas are exactly the background which I want my installations to have. There were already a very huge background to be able to step on and create something. Mm-hmm. So yeah. So uh, from your answer, I understand that you have uh, you try to search for places uh, that. Uh, are uh, characterized from uh, abandonment or uh, silence or something that uh, creates space in order for you to create something that uh, has to say something. So um, your compositions are mostly uh, in public spaces, but uh, are they also in public view? Uh, that is, uh, can the viewer easily access your spaces? Mm-hmm. First of all, I would not label these spaces my spaces, although I would be very happy if they were my spaces. <laughs> but uh, yeah, it's not always true that they can be, that the public, that anyone has access to those places. And uh, the reason is that sometimes you have to break a glass to just jump in a factory. Mm-hmm. It's not uh, open to everyone. Um, I think. If you look around you, you can find everywhere the sense of paradox, which if you really observe on it, you will see another narrative existing on what you have learned every day to read around you. So the city has a lot of a lot of uh, fun facts happening, which if you, for example, have a camera with you and just take photos of those funny, funny incidents, you will end up with, with a kind of of heavy bulk of stories to tell. Mm-hmm. I observe like anecdotes about uh, whatever happened or is about to happen. Yeah. Yes. Or could happen, yeah. Uh, by going away from the from the urban mm-hmm. and the deep urban uh, network, the amount of information which is being sur- which is surrounding those paradox images is going lower and lower. And this leaves a lot a lot of space for anything you want to create, to breathe inside the space. So it's not the same to place something in the middle of a big highway. It's not the same if you put it in the in the middle of Alexanderplatz. And it's not the same if it's going inside a huge abandoned uh, field, which used to be, for example, a military area. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's like your uh, your personal empty canvas. Yeah, exactly. That way. Yeah, yeah. And the more the more I work with places like this, I see that these places are identified by the majority of people as places of silence and an unconforming sense of comfortability. So it's at the same time a bit creepy because you're alone and you are empty, yes. alone in an empty, not really friendly area. But there's nothing to, 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 to push you away from that. And that's the time when the brain starts creating its own, um, its own story on what every one of us wants to see in this. And it's our brain's way, is your brain's way to define something in that uh, indefinite space yeah. that you found. Exactly. And uh, that's really uh, a kind of preservative. And mm-hmm. uh, just really human. 
So, um, about uh, your work uh, uh, with the title Set as Territory, um, in industrial, ah, I have to say some things, I wrote them down, okay. uh, in industrial uh, architecture, uh, the usability and functionality of space is a fundamental concern in their construction. Uh, you move into, into them by placing non-utilitarian objects, you make non-utilitarian installations in the remnants of these spaces. Tell us about uh, this uh, contrast in your choices and your relationship to the productive process itself, mm -hmm. if you may. <laughs> I have to start by the fact that the city I used to live and where I produced my biggest body of work is a city that has been heavily hit by the economic crisis. This created... Um, this gave me a lot of choices for buildings which went abandoned in the last five or ten years. And um, by researching the history of the economic crisis, you could see that the places which were abandoned were very well connected to the way people used to live and spend before they realized that we don't have any more, either to spend or to live with. Um, I choose to utilize the places which strongly carry the history of this economic devastation that's going on right now. So these places are mostly uh, factories which used to build um, interior devices or furniture for houses because they were feeding the big dream of creating a family and living with a lot of money and kids and having everything. Uh, the idea of the American dream, maybe you could say. In a, in a, in a Greek, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, in a Greek yeah. society, yeah, exactly. Also, uh, I've used agricultural backgrounds, which also carry uh, in Greece. They carry a very deep history because lately we have abandoned these activities. But but the the way the Greek nation has built up its own kind of uh, sense of mm -hmm. uh, believing in itself has been through ag agriculture. And those fields nowadays are, are not being used anymore, which is for me a sign of something, I don't know. Uh, it, it carries the history. It's, it's really decent, actually, yeah. uh, in the history of, of the nation, because uh, the Greek nation is also... Pretty decent, decent. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And um, so by... Using these places, yes, there is a utilitarian space. There, is, there are strictly utilitarian spaces, mm -hmm. and, but they're not being used anymore. Mm -hmm. So when you go there, when I go there, I always think of the history of the space. So, for example, when I'm, when I'm jumping inside the factory, which used to build uh, kitchens, I can, see, I can see the space where all the kitchens of the, of the families that started as my own and friends of mine might have been built in there. And I can imagine how the workers used to be, how they were paid, what they were thinking of their own dream of working in such a factory and making money and building their own kitchens, both from these factories and, you know, all these stories going back and forth. So but then you, yeah, yeah, yeah. But then you enter the space and you see it empty. Mm -hmm. And this story is just like an echo, which if you have... If you if you are ready to listen to it, you can listen to it. Or if you search for the remnants of these utilitarian activities, you will find some. The thing is that the the, the space anymore is not is not carrying any of the utilitarian activity which used to happen back then. But now I'm using it to present something which is perceived as art. For me, there is a very strong uh, contrast to the design of the space in the beginning and how the space is being utilized by me now. And this is kind of the way that makes me feel that I'm making my own work because the space is empty in such a way anymore that it can be transformed in a totally different way. No more sweat is being uh, given in the space there. No more people are making their money and no more machines, expensive machines are being fueled and work to produce. Now it's standing silent, and the only thing that it deserves, from my point of view, is to have something like an artwork standing in the middle and getting advantage of the previous history that has been going on in there. And giving the space another meaning. If somebody ten dares to look and find and, and see, I think they will think like that. Yeah, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and that's why I'm using also the 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 the, the paradox. Uh, 
the paradox particle in, in all this thing because it's very easy to create something which looks very similar to how it used to be when it was being used. Mm-hmm. But a slight, slight change on how the thing would look in the end could make it be uh, a paradox and not mm-hmm. another abandoned factory with a huge tool in the middle. Yeah, and not at all the same. Yeah. Yeah, and it, it, that's confusing. That's, that makes you think, that makes you raise questions. Mm-hmm. But I want to ask you about something about that. Uh, where do you start? Where is your limit uh, in selecting uh, pieces, uh, utilitarian um, uh, stuff from uh, the, your surroundings? How, how do you do that? What, what is the, the process? Yeah, the, when you when I when I'm going to to big dumps, mm-hmm. I can just pick up everything and pick up everything and anything. Mm-hmm. The people in, in Greece, people leave their garbage, the ones that they don't know where to throw, in places where people don't tend not to go. So you have a huge a huge warehouse of materials which also carry the history of being rejected. And for me, it's like um, picking not the best, uh, not the best football player for my team by by using those leftover materials for my works, and I'm very happy to be with them. But when you start looking at those places and think, okay, people just leave stuff around, then you, you then there is no border on what can be used because um, when there is an accident, for example, and there are two cars left aside and all of the pieces of the cars are thrown in the street, and you know that because the the setup of your country is such that it might stay there for six months, then is it really a problem if you utilize this thing in your next work? If you if you no, no. if you take some it's parts of it, there, like yeah. what what is what is the property then? Whose property is an accident, for example, or whose property is an illegal dump? Mm-hmm. So I would say that there is no border, and since. I'm not gonna get caught for stealing. Yeah. It's all. It's all. And you can't say that uh, it is legal because it, it becomes public from one point to another. It, somehow. That's the, that's exactly the, the game I was playing. Yeah. What what what's private? What's public? When everything is left outside. With, what you with, see, what you don't see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And how you see. And I have to say here that most of the things which I I set up and I didn't uh, I didn't like how they were. I return them back to the places where I took them from. So I'm in constant contact with what the space has, what I can borrow, what I can use, and what I can leave back. I like playing this as a game, although it's not written or sold anywhere. Okay. Yeah. Really, really interesting process for you too. Yeah, it's, it's mainly something like a, a relaxation after creation. Wait, <laughs> I lost my question. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Yeah, and... Um, okay, so, uh, moving on. Mm-hmm. I, I wanted to, um, to say a few things uh, about uh, something that I had in mind. Uh, because I, I think that, that for there to be a work of art, at least one observer or uh, other than the artist is necessary in order to be perceived. Mm-hmm. Uh, in your case, you often document the hard-to-access spaces and you should reproduce them uh, with the video and photographs. How do you think the experience of a uh, spatial installation is conveying, conveyed through the image? It's a totally different thing, yeah. of course. And um, when I started going with my going myself and creating installations in spaces, I was mainly thinking that I would carry all those things and build them up back in the studio. The more I was doing what I was doing, I realized that there is a sense of the, 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 the human and the body contact with the space and the items is by itself a story that deserves to be told. So that's when I, I start using photography. And I realized that there are different layers of production and the ways that the production can be perceived. There is a layer which unavoidably can be just my own connection with the words because it all starts from my mind. It starts in a day that I'm playful enough to just search around with my bike and find a new space to play there or create. And then there's the next layer that you see, for example, when I'm printing a picture or when I'm making an art book and you see the whole procedure. Um, What I'm doing to enhance the second narrative that comes 
is I'm trying to create this, a story that I'm creating a, an art book, for example, which is showing me moving around the city and trying to give information about the locations and everything. So the, so the reader or the viewer of a photography is taking is, is, is looking more at the complete story of a person who is moving around, searching for faces, creating and taking photographs and then leaving the works there, mm-hmm. other than trying to give you the best impression of what I did and what I felt. In an ideal universe, I would like to take people with my bike or my car and move them around the places which I was working and producing and show them what I was doing. Asking them to jump with me inside the the dump or an abandoned factory. But I know that this is not 100% possible. This is something that I'm thinking of doing maybe in the future. So my next way of, of, of showing my work is imagining myself as a wanderer in these places and me, myself, photographing myself and writing my own history. So, so, so you're interested in uh, uh, sewing the process. Yeah. Uh, that's a, a really big part of your work. You really try to be honest. Yeah. I would just say with uh, the, the viewer, the, um, the person that uh, perceives your art, mm-hmm. what you're doing. Yeah. Okay. But also when I'm doing it, when, when I am the one to choose, I have the ability to just give you an insight just from the keyhole and let the brain create the rest of the connecting uh, stories in between. And that's what I really like, giving the observer the, the, the power, because I believe in this power, to create their own story looking at my works. I don't believe that I have to, to have it all well cooked for them. Okay, that's interesting because I wanted to, to add something else. Um, and because in modern times, uh, we see that uh, there is a tendency by many artists to give the idea um, uh, of uh, things detached from the physical process, the process in making. Uh, they turn to crafts people who make for them the uh, pieces they compose for their final work. Uh, in uh, your work, uh, on the one hand, you deal with the bodily process and often record it, as you say. And uh, on the other hand, you, you use straight bed mates. Uh, so how do you relate matter to the process of creating an installation, more specifically? Yeah. Um, just, uh, yeah. I spoke before also about this idea of the rejected item. Yeah. And I believe that um, if we can choose on what we will focus, independently from the from the amount of um, light that deserves to be set on qualities or quantities of materials. What I mean by that is that a piece of garbage or a piece of leftover ready-made is as important for me as the best handcraft taken out from the best gold, goldsmith workshop in a work. It's all about what the context of the work is and how the context is, is giving, um, is, is spreading and pulsating the meanings on the materials that are creating the imagery that speaks about the context. So in this case, um, I'm trying to let myself free as a kid who's speaking streets when I'm in a place which is full of materials and uh, I tend to, I see that I tend to choose the things that are carrying the history of the rejection uh, transformation, like materials which have very clear signs that they were once being used as uh, decorations, for example, or being the sign of a very big and expensive show. But now they have been broken or torn down, and the, the glory they used to have is still emitting some energy, but they are being picked from a dump. They are broken around, they are dirty, and they are, they are um, leftovers. So, so, so you do the same way with the titles you choose for uh, your work? Because the title is something that uh, leads uh, our mind uh, to a conclusion, to something that uh, we can uh, perceive and understand. As we did, uh, for example, with uh, Caesar's Throne. Yeah. And you do that in order to comment uh, something, uh, as you said. Yes, because in the end, when it's been, when when it's pro- when 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 it exists in front of me, the sense of paradox 
is equally is equally strong as the sense of fun mm-hmm. you can make of what's being shown there and what you are trying to criticize. Because from my point of view, criticizing something by using what the society is is is, is living over is a criticization in the society itself, which doesn't have always to be extra heavy as a thing. It's also funny sometimes. I think that what the paradoxes that we spoke before about, like in the city, uh, I find it funny in a way, funny or enjoyable to look at. So when it's the time to, to create the title, I'm not trying to overthink about it. I mainly choose the, the, the title that, that mainly fits the idea of what's being presented in front of me. The way the viewer will make the connection between the title and what they see is my trust on the on the on the viewer. Yeah, it's my way of showing trust to the viewer. Okay, yeah. perfect. And uh, that's all I have to ask you. Good. Amazing. Thank you very much for Thank you to have an amazing time. Rot, orange, gelb, green, blau, violet, lila, brown,